Hey guys, I'm gonna show you how to set up a slip bobber rig. Here we're in the boat getting ready to go for um, an afternoon of crappie fishing. Uh, I wanna show you how to set up a, a simple slip bobber. The, the benefit of, of slip bobber is that the bobber slides up and down the line and it, it's set, you can change the, the, the depth of where the bobber sits based on this little thread that you this knot that you slide onto the line. This slides right up through the, your eyelets on your, on your rod. And so um, this is way better than a clip-on clip bobber if you're fishing in any depth more than two or three feet. Um, so here's how you do it. Um, first, you need your slip bobber thread. They, they come in, in packs of you know, 10, 50. So the first thing you do is you wanna thread this guy you you stick your you stick your line through that guy that little plastic tube and then you slide the knot off up up toward the line that way once this knot is on the line we can get rid of this tube we don't need that anymore then the next thing you need is a little tiny bead. So this bead is what stops the knot from sliding through the bobber. This line, the line goes through the bead and now, now I've got the knot and the bead and now it's time for the bobber. You want the right size bobber, you, you don't want too much buoyancy we're fishing for crappies and so crappies you're you're typically fishing with light tackle we'll go with this one um, what happens next once we've got our knot and our bead the next thing that goes on again we're, we're gonna we're gonna put this upside down it'll, it'll feel like it's going on upside down but when the line is pulled down it will be right side up. We just thread the line in through the top first. Yeah, I don't know if you can see that. I can hardly see it. So slide that line through, and now, now these are our these are our three components. Our knot stops right there, and then the last thing you need is you need your you need the business end. So I'm just gonna put this uh, Lindy Little Nipper hair jig on here. You can put a bear hook on the end. You can put a jig of, of any kind, a jig in plastic. I really like this, the feather or hair jigs because um, the fish don't pull the plastic down. Um, they're a lot more durable. And so because we're gonna fish with a minnow on here as well. I want a, a little jig head, this, and I'm gonna I'm gonna tie a palomar knot. This is gonna be really hard to see here with this light, with this little line. But you go through the eyelet, and then you you come, you pull enough line out, and then you go back through the same way you just went. Okay, so now I've got this set up right here. Palomar knot, and now you're just gonna you're just gonna tie an overhand knot. And so you're you're left with with this guy right here. And now stick your jig right through that loop. And that locks it. So now you just, you need to pull on this tag end a little bit. I just put a little saliva on it. That way the, the line pulls through a little easier and you don't burn the line. Kind of creates a little bit of a lube, lube to it. Um, so now once you pull on that guy, you can cut off this tag end. Super strong knot, 
simple. And now, so your bobber and your bead and your and your jig right here, what I what I typically like to do is now pinch on a little split shot. Um, just to add a little extra weight. Like that. Yeah, that's better. So now I've got all components put together here. So here's the beauty of the slip bobber. Here's our here's our stop knot. And this, if I want to fish in in three feet, I set my stop knot about about three feet up from where from where the jig's gonna hold. And that way when the bobber hits that stop knot, it stops right there. Now if I want to fish in 12 feet, what I'm gonna do is slide this stop knot way up the line. This bobber can slide all the way up, all the way up to, to 12 feet, if that's where I set it. And I can end up winding this knot right up through the eyelets. And it can even go into your, in, once I get that knot to where I want it to be, I cut off that that extra thread. That way you're not winding all of that thread up through your line. I leave a little bit, a little bit hanging. So that way, because over time when the, this knot will loosen up a little bit, but you can still have enough to grab onto it. But that, that, that slip knot will, will come right up through the eyelets like that. And you can reel that all the way up and that way You can cast out again with only, you know, a foot and a half of line hanging off of the end of end of your pole. So I hope that was helpful. Give that a shot next time. It takes a little bit of setup, but it's gonna it's gonna produce a lot more fish. You're gonna end up keeping the bait exactly where you want it by by slip bobbering. Um, it's gonna hang that bait right in front of the fish, and you'll catch more fish that way and you'll be able to really help the young ones who like fishing with bobbers whether you're young or old it doesn't matter um, slip bobbering is is one of my favorite ways to target crappies um, spring summer fall it doesn't matter um, you can when you mark those fish on your graph and you know exactly where they're suspended you just set your stop knot at that depth whether it's six feet or whether it's 20 feet. Um, and then you cast your bobber out there, bobber goes down. It takes the guesswork out of how much line do I have down? If, if you're jigging, um, sometimes you don't know if, you're, if you have 12 feet out or you have 14 feet. And sometimes that foot or two difference is, is gonna make a big difference. Crappies will typically feed upwards. They'll, they'll feed even or up. They won't feed down. And so it's important to keep that bait within, within sight um, and usually, you know, a foot or two higher where they're hanging. And so um, give that a shot next time you're out and uh, hope that was helpful. Until next time, we'll see ya.